if you remember that moment from TV's Baywatch, odds are it left a lasting impression. It also means you might be a millennial. It's a generation that got to experience AOL Instant Messenger, the Spice Girls, MySpace, and so much more. Being a millennial is also at the center of the latest entry of our Winter Reads series. It's called One in a Millennial. It's on friendship, feelings, fangirls, and fitting in. It's an exploration, really, of pop culture. The millennial zeitgeist and the life lessons learned all along the way. And joining us now is the author of One in a Millennial, Kate Kennedy. She's also an entrepreneur, host of the podcast Be There in Five. Okay, so tell us about this book, uh, One in a Millennial. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so the book is really about uh, talking through the pop culture and media that makes us a product of our time, but also the experience in girlhood where sometimes your engagement with mass culture with you know certain types of media makes people dismiss your interest in it and uh, kind of reclaiming those things we were told maybe weren't important and arguing for their significance because you talk about how surface level interests can lead to depth i love that idea yes absolutely you brought up you know aol instant messenger we think of social media as being kind of the you know pioneer of social networking, but I was on AIM for 12 years. The, it was kind of our water cooler <laughs> in middle school and high school. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the TV shows and the influence because we just showed a clip from Baywatch. I, of course, remember it. Saved by the Bell was like a ritual for me every day after school, right? Your book looks back at the shows that defined really a generation, but it looks back at it through a different lens. So tell us all about that. Yeah, I was re-watching some of my favorite programming when I was researching for the book. And one thing that I thought was interesting is a lot of is some of the characters I didn't like as a kid, I now was found so engaging. And I realized characters like uh, Jesse Spano, for example, she was kind of defined, you know, as this feminist type. But watching it as an adult, her feminism was used as a an object for comedy it was more of a punchline than it was an outstanding character trait. And I remember thinking, she's kind of a stick in the mud, like lighten up. Like, you know, he, he or she's clearly overbooked and having a bit of a meltdown. Um, but I think that she was often making good points. This is relatable to be stressed out, to have a little too much on your schedule. And every time she would say things about women's rights to her on and off boyfriend, AC Slater, he'd kind of dismiss her. And I noticed this through the laugh track where she would say something about women's rights and he would tell her to get back into the kitchen uh, or he would call her she would call him a sexist pig and he'd say oink oink baby what happens is the, the audience is silent silent when she speaks and they crack up when ac slater speaks so i'm not i'm watching a programming block at you know 9 a.m on a saturday adjacent to cartoons it's like oh so this is what high school is like i speak up i push back boys make fun of me crowd laughs you know what i mean yeah it's kind of like a playbook almost for the way things were then uh it's the same thing when you look back at interviews like with britney spears it's a perfect example of how um an acceptable way of being was so different and it wasn't that long ago um and you know millennials we know we're constantly the butt of jokes right it's the millennials fault it's always the millennials fault you talk about uh the generation as a much maligned generation so how does your book try to break those at least misconceptions yeah, I think what's interesting about millennials is that we're very defined how, by how people see us from the outside, but mo most of the millennial tropes are not how people inside the generation identify at all. Whether you think of, um, you know, and all generations have their opinions about others, but millennials kind of got a rough edit in the 2010s, like mid 2010s, all of a sudden every major headline was like, they millennials kill low fat yogurt, restaurants, the entirety of the American dream, paper napkins, diamonds. And it's just like, what? <laughs> we're being accused of killing off these major industries. And then, you know, in recent years, we're kind of made fun of for skinny jeans and side parts and being cringy by younger people. So we're kind of wedged between two generations that don't always think very highly of us. Meanwhile, I don't think any of us really align with any of that, you know, and when we're called lazy or entitled or job hopping, I think people fail to recognize how we're products of our time. And there are certain social, economic, cultural instances that really define when you're coming of age. And for us, it was seismic to grow up without the internet and now live in a world where we have it. Think about the greatest economic recession since the Great Depression when we entered the workforce. 
um, among other things that have delayed our milestones, our accumulation of wealth, and what looks like certain decisions that we make on purpose to like be contrarian, I think actually are a function of our circumstances that people don't always give us the benefit of the doubt for. Uh, certainly interesting entrepreneur, podcaster, and author of One in a Millennial, Kate Kennedy, thanks so much for joining us this morning. By the way, if you want to grab a copy of this new book, it's available wherever books are sold. Keep it right here in Scripps News. We've got more Morning Rush after this.